Hello, my name's Toby. I'm one of the developers at Bulldozer.com and welcome to this video on how to set up recurring billing using Bulldozer. You need to have a client. Clients can be viewed and created from client management. Use the Create New Client button to add a new client. Every client must have a unique reference in Bulldozer, also known as the account number. This is not the same as a bank account number. You enter the client details. It can be an individual or a company. There are certain fields in Bulldozer that are optional. The ones that are compulsory will be marked with a small asterisk. A client who must receive their invoices via email can be marked as such using the checkbox. To add addresses, use the Client Addresses tab and click the Add Address button. You have various address types that you can pre-select. In order to save the address to the client, you must click the Save Address button at the bottom. If the client has contact persons that you wish to record, or if they are a company, then you can add contact persons under that tab. Now you can go straight away to save and create a repeating invoice, but in this case we're just going to save and close and go over to the accounting tab to create the repeating invoice. You can view and manage repeating invoices under the contract management option on the left hand side. Repeating invoices can be active or inactive or while waiting the approval depending on your settings. You first of all choose the client that you wish to create the repeating invoice for. Next you can select an escalation. Escalations can either occur one year after the charge anniversary or they can be set up to escalate on a given month of the year such as January or February. Next you can choose a sales consultant. Sales consultants can be added and managed under the sales consultants option under contract settings. The invoice info is a piece of text information that will be copied onto every invoice that gets generated from this repeating invoice. Next you must choose the run date. The run date is the date that the first invoice will be generated. The term will be the term in months and a term of zero means that the invoice will carry on being generated. For weekly or bi-weekly invoices, we will ask you what day of the week you wish to generate the invoice on. And if you select other, then we will ask you which month of the year you wish to generate the invoices on. For the purposes of this example, we will just create a monthly invoice. Next, we, we can select the items that we are going to be invoicing on a recurring basis for. Items can be escalated or not escalated depending on their settings. More about that in a little later in this video. You can overwrite the price and the description of the items that you select as well as the taxable status. Note that items can have their own term which is separate from the term of the repeating invoice. To see the term of line items, click on the advanced option. You'll see that this item here has a term of three months from the date that the repeating invoice starts. You can also have items which are known as immediates. An immediate item is invoiced immediately that the repeating invoice is saved. If you select any immediate items, then a start date will appear and the start date will be the date issued of the invoice that contains the immediate items. Where you wish to collect payment for a repeating invoice by debit order, you can use the payment collection box at the bottom. You'll have to select the day of the month that the debit order must be collected. The options are 1 to 30 and last day. And then you add the bank account or credit card from which the money must be collected. When you select the bank account, the sort code will be brought down automatically and you can enter the bank account number. 
Bulldozer will validate the bank account number against your payment service and if there's any kind of error, then you will not be allowed to save the bank account. The last option is where the payment falls on a Saturday or Sunday. Do we roll the payment forward or do we roll it back? That's the Friday Friday, so if it falls on a Sunday, then it will be collected on a Friday. And if it falls on a Saturday, in this case, it will be collected on the Friday. Now you can save and close the repeating invoice. Bulldozer generates invoices ahead of time so that they can be collected by debit order. To see the number of days ahead that Bulldozer will generate invoices for, you go to General Settings, Billing Rules, and there's number of days in advance to generate invoices. Now we can go back to accounting and see the invoices that Bulldozer has generated for this repeating invoice. I'm going to enter the account number, press enter to filter, and you'll see the two invoices, one being the immediate invoice and the other being the recurring monthly invoice. You can view the immediate invoice using the action. The monthly recurring invoice will have the repeating line items on it and will be generated each month going forward. Note that you can edit these invoices as well and add items to them. You can download PDFs and you can see the history transactions for that client. This will show you all the invoices that have been previously generated for the client. The batch date can be seen in the batch column you can see that these invoices are going to be collected on the 30th of November and the 15th of November respectively and the batches are open. To send debit order batches, go to the Batch Collections tab and all your invoice batches will be list listed. To see the invoices in the batch, use the View Invoices in Batch option. There all your invoices are ready for collection. You can go back and when you're ready to send the batch, you click the Send for Payment button that's on the right hand side of the batch. This will then ask you which action date you wish to collect the money and what type of payment. Is it a two day or a same day? From time to time you may need to cancel the repeating invoice so that no further invoices are generated. Go back to the accounting tab, find the repeating invoice, and use the actions that are next to the repeating invoice to select Cancel Repeating Invoice. You'll be asked for the last date of access to the service and you will also be given the option to credit any outstanding unpaid invoices. You may wish to see how a repeating invoice is going to behave in the future. For that you can use the Calculate Future Invoices action. A window will appear with the details of the repeating invoice and it will ask you the number of days ahead for which you, which you wish to see the calculation. There you can see the invoices that will be issued in the future and the debit order day they will be collected. Note that you can get a PDF of the actual contract uh, using the standard template in Bulldozer. That's a useful thing if you need to get a mandate that the client has to sign in order for the debit order to be executed. Now I'm going to talk about the actual item codes and how we can set them up to be taxable, immediate and give them a term. All your items are configured under general settings. To create a new item, use the create item button. Every item must have a unique item code, a description, the price is optional, you can select the taxable status, you can decide whether escalations affect this item when it is added to a repeating invoice. You can link an item to an accounting code in your accounting package. You can select whether it is immediate. If it's an immediate item, then the term will always be one and you will have the option to choose whether you wish to collect by debit order. The external item is when you have a cloud-based accounting package such as Zero or Sage One, where there is an external item code to be linked to. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the next video.